What survival myth is completely wrong and can get you killed? You can drink water from a cactus. Any liquid inside a cactus will be highly acidic and likely to cause nausea and diarrhea. Further dehydrating you. Follow flying birds to find water, they can simply be flying to spend a night anywhere. So we can't rely on them. Conserving water. You should not stretch a glass of water over four days. When you are thirsty, you need water. If you're in a hot area, don't ration your water. Drink when you feel thirsty and search for more water. Edit. The myth to be avoided is rationing your water. Don't ration. If you're in a tornado, open all your windows to equalize the pressure inside to match the outside. If you're in a tornado opening any window or door will create a wind tunnel that rips your entire roof off. Concerning frostbite. Do not rub someone's frostbitten skin or pour hot water on it to warm them up. Such measures will damage the skin even more severely. That moss grows on the north side of a tree. It can grow all over the tree. So it's not a steadfast rule that you should make important decisions solely on. That bullshit change your voicemail if you're a lost PSA that was making the rounds over the last year. You need a cell signal to change your voicemail. If you have a signal then why wouldn't you just call for help? Moreover it misses the most important thing about US cell phones and being lost. 911 will work on any cell tower regardless if it's in network or even if you have an active phone plan or not. So in an emergency always try dialing 911 regardless of your phone appears to have signal or not. Edit. To the dozens of people who replied that you are supposed to change your voicemail before going out. This is still a bad idea. If you're lost or injured in the woods. Your survival depends on being found quickly. Waiting for someone to get worried enough about you not coming back to try calling you is just going to waste precious time. It's much better to just tell your friends, family where you will be and set up a check-in time so they know you made it back safely. Split to cover more ground. Most of the stuff Bear Grylls does. Like eating raw meat, picking and eating fruit out of bear shit, or squeezing the juice out of elephant shit and drinking it. You cannot eat everything that an animal can eat. There are things animals can eat that humans find toxic. So eating everything you see animals eating can lead to you potentially eating deadly berries or mushrooms. Just because water looks clean doesn't mean it is. You've gotta boil it or distill it to actually have clean water. The first mistake in wilderness is to look for food and water first before having a shelter up to keep yourself dry and warm. Also if you have to forage for food. Avoid mushrooms entirely. Odds are so slim you will find an edible kind that you're much better off looking for things like nuts. Seeds. And berries. Someone people say that herbivores animals are friendly and peaceful. So you are safe being around them. Seriously everything from cows to deer can and will kill you if you make it angry. It is usually a good idea if you are in the wilds not to get near any large wild animal. But herbivores can often be even more aggressive than the predators. If a predator attacks you, you have a fairly good chance of scaring it off. Especially if it's smaller than you. Because it's likely only looking for food. If a herbivore attacks you, you're fucked because it genuinely wants to kill you. Running in a zigzag to outrun an alligator. Alligators don't run for long distances. So this will probably just waste your energy. They can also climb some fences and trees as well. Anyone else read these comments with intrigue imaging yourself in said situation only to remember you haven't left the house in a long time and likely will never find yourself in these scenarios? Cause that's me. If a shark is coming after you. Swim away. If a shark is coming towards you in the first place. It's most likely just curious and wants to check you out. Swimming away and thrashing about will further intrigue it to keep following you. Instead, redirect it by running your hand along its side and carefully positioning it to swim away from you. Side note. If one happens to bite you. Poke. Stab it in the eyes or pull on its gills instead of bopping it in the nose. Gills and eyes are far more sensitive than a shark's nose. Edit. Loads of replies about how punching underwater is practically impossible. And you'd be 100% right. Fixed. Pulling out something that is impaling you. Almost anything related to avalanches. Here are a few popular and false myths. That they strike at random. Most avalanches that injure or kill people are caused by those people. And they always show signs of instability. If you are paying attention. 
The problem is that there are lots of false positives, where the signs are there. The instability is there. But people just don't quite manage to trigger them. That you should be quiet to be safe from avalanches. Because they are caused by sound. Sound does not trigger avalanches. Even very loud sounds are nowhere near enough. Avalanche control is done with howitzers and dynamite charges. That you can get out of the way. Well, sure. Of course sometimes it's possible. But they can travel up to 60 miles per hour. And they can let loose across an entire slope all at once. By the time it slides. You are likely in it. And it's inescapable. That you can save yourself by swimming. Maybe for very small ones. But usually you're just being thrashed. I've heard it compared to being in a side-loading washing machine. That you can spit to tell which direction is up. You won't be able to see anything useful. And, you know, gravity still works. But it's irrelevant because that relies on the next myth. That you can dig yourself out. Even if you are inches below the surface. It's very unlikely. The snow sets up very hard. Very fast. As thought you got caught up in a snowplow clearing a parking lot after a big snowstorm. People caught in avalanches report not being able to move their fingers. Along with that are all the normal problems people have with low probability. High consequence risks. The, it won't happen to me, stuff. But that's not so much an issue of myths as poor judgment due to things like familiarity with a slope. Desire to be accepted by a social group by skiing that rad backcountry line. Feeling committed because you came, all this way. Deferring to someone you perceive as an, expert. Desire to get the first tracks after a storm. Social proof. Where you see others doing it. So it must be safe. Etc. Lightning never strikes twice in the same place. If lightning has found a path that it likes to the ground it's extremely likely to strike there multiple times. That why lightning rods work. That you can give somebody CPR and they'll be fine moments later like nothing happened. You don't have to wait 24 hours to report somebody as missing to the police. Drinking water from a cactus. If absolutely needed for survival. You could get some water out of a fish hook barrel cactus but only in limited amounts. Most cactuses have various acids and other fun things in the water that will make you shit yourself to death. Dehydration in the desert isn't a laughing matter and you don't want to lose the precious bit of water left in your body to the desert ground. Drinking alcohol when you are freezing will keep you warm. It won't. It will bring on hypothermia much sooner. The desert is hot and little clothing is best. Cover up during both the day and the night. The sun will burn you and dehydrate you very quickly. During the night it's really common for people to die of hypothermia because the temperature drops so fast. And honestly living here. During the winter it gets to the low 20s f pretty often. And the wind is awful. Edit to add. It's dry heat here. There's no moisture in the air majority of the year. You can drop dead from heat stroke, barely, sweating. You can survive a moose attack. That's it. That's the myth. Because no you fucking can't. Edit. Holy baloney. This my most upvoted comment on Reddit. Well. At least 5000 people are smart enough to know that moose are a national and galactic threat. Cheers. Lads. Lassies and laser people. If your plane is crashing. An inflatable raft makes a terrible parachute. Drinking your own piss. People who survive do so despite drinking the wee-wee. But it sure is fun. Though. Stand in a doorway in an earthquake. If a nuclear bomb is exploding in your general vicinity. Hiding in a refrigerator will not save you. Hit a snake fast with a shovel. Or kill it by snapping it. If it bites you. Suck the poison out or use a tourniquet. No. FFS. Australians are constantly bewildered by every other country's madcap insanity around this. We live with deadly snakes. Why do people do these things? And hash X200B. Do not mess with the snake. Just leave it bloody alone. Magically. You don't get bitten. If you messed with the snake, C.1, we told you not to mess with it. Call an ambulance. Use a broad pressure bandage to immobilize the whole limb. Never ever tourniquet a snake bite. You are reducing the natural lymph movement through broadly spread pressure. Not trying to give them gangrene. The victim must not move unless being carried. Don't touch your damn mouth to the wound. Don't wash it. Just freaking stop. Immobilize. Write the time of the bite and circle the location on the outside of the bandage. And wait for professional help. 
If you have to choose between walking or waiting if you are a long way from help. You wait. You are more likely to survive by not moving at all. Please. For love of God. Just leave it alone. We have vastly more venomous snakes than a mere rattler. And we die vastly less often because we do not mess with the spicy danger noodle. Myth. The rubber tires on a vehicle will insulate you from ground and protect you from lightning. Lightning doesn't stop for two inches of rubber. Though the car will act like a Faraday cage and protect you from the electrical current unless you're in a convertible. A motorbike or any other vehicle that doesn't cover you in all directions. Also don't lay down on the ground during a thunderstorm. You increase the risk of being shocked by a ground current. Which can be pretty dangerous. Another thing. Don't take shelter under a tree or a gazebo. They can explode or light on fire when struck. That you'll be totally safe if you only eat plants, fungi you recognize. Hemlock looks a lot like wild parsnips. Basically all wild almonds will kill you if you eat more than one. And of course there's the Chris McCandless potato seed thing. If you get lost in the desert. Do not ration your water. You don't know how long you'll be there and if you ration you'll dehydrate yourself faster. Use the water to keep you in shape for a little longer which in turn can help you mentally. I read this somewhere which also mentioned that many people found dead in the desert still have a full canteen of water because they try to ration it. Apologies for no source. After hearing comments about it I looked this up to see if it was actually true given that it's just a random fact I remembered from somewhere. Off Grid Web explains in more detail why rationing water isn't the best idea. However I have seen some people say that you could ration water. But to an extent. Which does make sense there is a balance to it but I wrote this when I was tired and didn't really think it through. Hopefully this link can clear up some things. Edited for spelling and provided a source. You know if it's a myth. But I remember Bear Grylls had no qualms about getting wet in his show. But getting wet is extremely bad in survival situations in most climates. Dude I've been waiting to rant about this. Hopefully now I can help someone instead of just annoy my friends. It's a popular belief to either pull off a leech once it's bitten you. Or to pour salt on it so it lets go. Never do this. Pulling them off sounds as dangerous as it is. But pouring salt on them is even worse. Their entire body is a mucous membrane. AKA salt on it hurts. It causes them to projectile vomit before they let go. And your blood. Any parasites or diseases they have. Along with any other human or animal blood in their tummy immediately goes back into your bloodstream. And just like pulling them off. It also can cause them to lose teeth. Which also can get into your bloodstream and kill you. It sounds terrifying and faint inducing. But truly the best way to remove a wild leech safely. Is to let nature take its course. Once its belly is full it'll let go. And no teeth or any other yucky stuff will be in your blood. TLDR. Don't pour salt on a leech when it's bitten you. Or pull it off. It'll most likely hurt you. Let it fill up and then fall off scissor. Edit. Just to clear up my wording. When it comes to the teeth. It's not a matter of, it will kill you. It's a matter of it absolutely can. Just like there's the same probability you could just get an infection, still bad but you get it. You never know until it happens. Same with regurgitating. They can lose their teeth when they do so as well. Though even if they don't any blood or parasites in their bodies then go into you. There's a equal chance you can survive it just as you can't. But either way it is highly dangerous and not worth it at all. Burning them in any way or forcibly trying to remove them is not the best way to go. I'm not saying you will die if you do this. Just that it's not a good idea and there's a chance thumbs up. Not so much a myth. But people often think that getting to safety or getting out of a vehicle or traffic after a crash is a good idea. If you're ever involved in a severe wreck and you suffer any damage to your body. It's very important not to move. If you can do so to call 911. Yeah. But as far as moving any limb, with the exception of calling medical emergency personnel. Readjusting your body to get more comfortable. Don't do any of that. You can cause broken bones you may have suffered to start cutting or puncturing your skin or insides which could cause you to start bleeding internally. Edit. Note. That I said severe. Of course if your car is on fire. Get out. But if you're involved in something minor. Don't just sit in traffic if it's possible to drive out of the way. Scrolling through these comments knowing full well that my ass isn't going outside city limits any time in the next decade. 
if a limb is dislocated. Pop it back in. Don't. Just don't. The doctors take extreme care and use crazy amounts of drugs when doing this in the hospital. And they have a good reason to do that. If anything is caught, it will be crushed. And if a blood vessel or nerve gets caught, then the limb will probably need to be amputated. Source. Took a course. If you're attacked by a grizzly slap that bitch in the face and call his mother a whore. Not a myth but I feel there is too little awareness about using wet rocks near fire as they can potentially explode and cause serious damage. And hash X200B. Example. Do not use river rock as a cooking surface between direct fire and your food. Nature's version of pressure cooker with a loose old gasket. Drinking alcohol when you are stuck in extreme cold. Alcohol dilates blood vessels and opens the pores in your skin allowing body heat to escape. You feel hotter because your skin is warm but your core body temperature is dropping. Have your escape plan and car ready. In case of a nuclear disaster. Nope. In case of a nuclear disaster you don't have time to follow your one. 5 hour escape plan to that mountainside safe house. In case a nuclear bomb detonate and you don't die in the initial blast. You have a maximum of 10 minutes before the radiation falls to the ground and you will need to stay at least 24 hours in a protected area e. G. A bathroom with no windows. 98% of the casualties after a nuclear bomb will be people sitting in their cars. Stuck in traffic while breathing in those radioactive particles. Trying to get home to rescue their cats. Edit. The time frame from the nuclear explosion to when it becomes relatively safe to change location can be 24 hours. 48 hours or even up to 2 weeks depending on the circumstances. Yield etc. Radioactive decay is next level science. Pouring salt on a serious burn does not help you. Learned from experience. I was a teenager when a bad situation led to me being branded and burned with cigarettes multiple times. Afterward. Not sure how to help me. My friend remembered gladiator and poured a thing of salt over the worst burns. I ended up going to the doctor the next day. They had to scrape the dead skin away. Which was made all the more painful by the gritty salt. But hey. Live and learn I guess. When you're a girl and you're running away from the killer through the woods. Don't constantly look the opposite direction you are running. This will definitely lead to you tripping and falling. If you do trip and fall. Don't lay there crying and wiping your hair out of your face. This will definitely give the killer the opportunity to catch up to you. Similarly. When running away from a car or a giant wheel. Don't run the direction that the pursuer is traveling. This will definitely keep you in the direct path of the pursuer. Instead. Veer to either the right or the left of the path of the pursuer. If you are the beautiful wife and children of a protagonist. Do not sit around the breakfast table on a lovely. Sunny morning talking about how happy you are together and. This is key to any middle school or high school loved ones. Do not make eye rolling and or snarky remarks about what a doofus your dad is. This will definitely lead to your family being either killed or kidnapped that same day. Always stay with your car. It's better for searchers to do that. If there is a search underway. But if there is no search and you can walk out. Then do that. The ducks at the park are not for free. You will go to jail. That a restraining order will protect you. You have to take action beyond a restraining order. Punching the biggest guy in prison. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video don't forget to drop a like. If you would like to see more content like this in the future. Subscribe and turn on notifications to be notified about future videos. Now check out one of these interesting videos.